Hey guys, welcome. I am so sorry I had some technical difficulties. Um, I have created this whole new little setup and everything looks fancy and all that. So I uh, wanted to say welcome to everyone and thank you for being patient because this is a hot mess over here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyways, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Alviana Brewster, founder of Black Nurse Entrepreneurs. And I hope that you guys have been enjoying our organization. We are going going places, hopefully, here in 2020. Um, I dub this the best networking organization for you to be able to launch, build, and grow your uh, Black nurse entrepreneurship endeavors. So I want to say welcome, especially if this is your first time tuning in. So we'll jump in. I'm going to get started by giving you some updates first. And then, of course, we have to talk about the hottest topic on the planet right now. But um, yeah, it's just right now, I want to give you some updates and let you know what's been going on behind the scenes and what all to expect. Uh, first and foremost, as many of you know, I quit my job. Um, I was working in CVICU on the night shift and I started that back in December. I learned very quickly that it's not my forte. And I believe in nursing, we all have niches, we all have specialties. Um, my generalized background is cardiology. I've been doing cardiac care for since 2005. So everything, all thing cardiac. But um, I wanted to challenge myself a little bit. I wanted to get a, a little bit better, um, just skill set, period. And so I jumped into CVICU world. Um, it was great. You know, I can't complain because I did learn a lot and there's a lot that I will take with me. However, I understand that that's not my area. And also I have a lot of passions as far as with B&E, as far as with my personal brand and other endeavors I'm involved in. So it was just really hard for me at that point. I was going through a lot of back and forth, tug of war. I know a lot of you can understand and relate. So March 12th was my last day. Um, it was an official quit day. I have been unemployed since then. So that means I need you guys to send me food, send me packages, money, whatever y'all want to send me. I need, I need whatever at this point in time. But everything has to be healthy because I've been gaining too much weight sitting over here at this house. Anyways, those who knew about me um, leaving my job. I really appreciate you guys keeping me uplifted. Many of you have called me, have texted me, have checked on me to make sure I was okay. Um, it was a very difficult time, very difficult situation, but I'm here. You know, I'm alive, I'm well, and I'm ready to go to work uh, to make this an even better organization. So that was part of the reason why I left is because I had this feeling of I needed to be practicing in my purpose opposed to being there working. And there would be times that I'd be there from 6.30 to nine o'clock. I would come home, I was working night shift, so I would come home, go to sleep, and then be right back awake within the next couple of hours. So it was very difficult for me to deal with it. Um, it was a, a struggle as far as my emotional sense is concerned because on one hand, you know, I was out there in North Carolina for the act like a boss, think like a nurse with Tammy. I was out there, I had an amazing time. I met so many of you guys and thank you for connecting and networking with me. But I was on a, a, a serious high when I left that event and then I came back here all to be kind of back in that mental and emotional roller coaster. So it was really important for me to go ahead and break that tie. I stepped out on faith, I took a leap of faith and you hear, hear this with a lot of entrepreneurs. A lot of entrepreneurs say, you know, you come to that point where you have to just step out on faith and just do something, just make it happen. So that's what I did. And again, I really appreciate each of you who have reached out to me, who have called and texted and make sure that I was okay. Uh, next thing I want to discuss on the agenda is our B&E trip. And so therefore, um, I know a lot of you have wondered about that. Um, right now, it's kind of pending. It's up in the air a little bit. We may have to eventually cancel it. And I'm okay with that. Um, I know that we are under a international crisis. And what's more important to me at this point in time is that we are all safe and healthy. It's not important to me that we're partying necessarily. So we will celebrate in some form or fashion, whether it's on the trip or something else, we will definitely celebrate. Um, I will let you know, I've been I'm being told that uh, June the 2nd is our last day for cancellation. 
And I have continued to encourage you guys, make sure that you do have your traveler's insurance in place. Just in case we have to um, cancel it, I want people to get their money back, but be on the lookout. You know, I will keep you updated about that. Um, again, we may have to counsel and I'm completely okay with that. If that's what it comes to, then that's just what we're going to do, but we'll celebrate in other ways. Uh, next. So, um, we will start an advertisement package. Um, a lot of people in the group have actually asked me about this. And as you know, throughout the years, b and &E has been 100% completely free. But it's coming to a point in time where I want to level it up and take it to the next level. And I know most of you have some sort of a business sense about you and understand the, the importance of being able to provide better resources. So we will in institution, it, how do you say it? Implement, implement. We will implement a advertising package. Um, I hope to drop this on April 1st, which is next Wednesday, I believe. And so I will have a couple of um, flyers and information to pop out about that. Needless to say, to give you kind of a little bit of a background of it, I plan on continuing to have the free Fridays, especially for MLM and network marketing. I want to also have it maybe just for everybody to have the opportunity to keep some part of BNE as a free resource. Um, the advertisement package will include a bundle where you'll be able to purchase and then also be able to advertise not only in BNE, but across our other social media platforms, as well as in our email list, newsletter, on the Facebook banner, things like that. So what it's going to do is help to broaden your visibility across social media. You know, now we have a LinkedIn page, we have an Instagram page, a Twitter, uh, so forth. So I, my plan is to be able to give you uh, better visibility across all of the social media platforms, but there's more to come about that. Um, just be on the lookout within the next couple of days. Next, I want to talk to you about our membership rollout. Our membership rollout, um, as you know, last year I discussed membership with you guys uh, quite a bit. Uh, my plan was to launch it January 1st. Obviously, we are getting pretty close to April 1st, so I had hit a few snags. I had a some couple of issues with that, but I want you to know that I have been working behind the scenes diligently so that I can roll out our membership because I feel like that is the best way that you'll be able to get the best benefits out of b and &E. So, um, I plan to roll it out kind of in a two-phase thing. Mid-April will be the first phase of it. And then at the end of April, just because I want to celebrate my birthday, um, I'll roll out the second part of it. So be on the lookout of that. I'm excited because I know that we'll have uh, our Impact Academy. We will have our directory. You guys have been asking me for these things. So I've been working very hard to uh, put this stuff into place. So I hope that you guys will see the value and the benefit of it. And I hope that we can continue to level our businesses up to the next level. Next, I want to talk to you about, of course, our coronavirus, right? Uh, first of all, I think it's important for me to say thank you um, to everyone. Um, this goes across the entire healthcare system. I know everybody in here is may not be a nurse or maybe a nursing student, et cetera, but, or may not even be on the front lines at this moment, but it's very important for us to stick together, especially during this time. There, this is not a need to be, you know, LVN this, RN that, oh, she thinks she's this, that, and other, oh, that's a nurse practitioner, blah, blah, blah. This is not the time for that nonsense, guys. We have to stick together. There is a, this is a legit battle. And if at any other point in time, I'll say this anyways, always, any, anywhere, but I feel like now is even more important for us to stick together because as you see, we're, we're faced with a multitude of issues right now. Um, I always have said that for some odd reason, I felt like healthcare did not get the respect that it deserved. And this is not an attempt to bash any other profession because I feel like everybody owes their respect. As you can see, everybody in this country has a place, you know, from the smallest all the way up to the top. And when one industry is down, it kind of has a ripple effect. And so, yeah, I believe that police officers or due respect. I believe that teachers are due a certain level of respect. Our law enforcement, our military, all of these people absolutely deserve respect. But I feel that nursing healthcare, 
we haven't gotten the respect that we needed throughout the years. I've, I've been a firm believer in that and I've been very vocal about that. And I feel like, you know, 2020 is, is our year, the year of the nurse. And for some odd reason throughout these years, we've been dubbed the most trusted profession, but I don't necessarily feel that we've gotten the full complete respect that we deserve, especially with the types of sacrifices that we make. Um, the amount of heartache, the amount of stress, the amount of just actually absolute ridiculousness sometimes, in my opinion, on how we're treated. So I think this is our time to really stand up and demand the respect that we deserve because we're putting our lives online to help essentially save our nation at this point. Um, it's kind of funny to me because now I feel like there's some things that we've been discussing throughout the years that nobody's ever put into place that may come down the pipeline, such as, you know, why is it that there are 50 states in this country, but only about half of them or a third of them are compact states? Like at this point in time, I feel like, as you see, you know, we've relaxed the standards. So now if you have a Texas license, you can go and work in California. You can go and work in New York because now your services are needed. When all of alone, we should have all been compact states. Like, why do we have to have three, four, five uh, licenses to travel across the state lines to practice? That never made sense to me. So hopefully that may be a push. And, and I, I ask you guys to be very vocal about these types of situations. Also, you know, there's always this back and forth about our advanced practice nurses. You know, why aren't, well, like here in the state of Texas, they don't have full practice authority. They still have to practice under a physician, but you can hop over next door to maybe a, like a Louisiana or somewhere where they have full practice authority. So again, at this point in time, I think this crisis highlights the importance of us having our advanced practice nurses across the nation have full practice authority. I think that may would have alleviated some of the issues that are going on. Again, not to mention all the, the disrespect and the, the amount of stress and the amount of expectations. You know, when I was working in the CVICU not too long ago, I was thinking, I'm like, the, the, the demands are, this is ridiculous. Like, this is inhumane <laughs> as some, I mean, is anybody else seeing this? The, the the expectations are inhumane. Like you expect us to be robots and we're not robots. Like we are people, we have families, we have feelings as well. You can't expect us to come in here, pay us nickels and then treat us any kind of way. And, and then expect us not to say anything, expect us to go with the flow. And I, I, I completely disagree. And I hope maybe that this, national crisis will shed some light on some things and hopefully us as nurses can continue to stick together and make some changes and make some uh i guess um evoke some laws or something i don't know hopefully that we can have a better voice because i feel like we haven't had a, a good voice throughout the years um maybe even better safety measures of, of course we talk about ratios and, and hours and safety conditions and things like that. This is this is crazy. This is real life crazy stuff going on right now. So you guys be very vocal and let's see what happens, you know. Um, also, as I've been saying throughout the year, you know, our model right now is we are the trend. And that is the B and E model motto. And I stand firm, I stand very firm on that. You guys. <laughs> We are the trend, all right? We are at the forefront of patient care. We are at the forefront in the for, on the front lines of what's going on. We have to be trendsetters. We have to be the ones that are making sure our voices are being heard, making sure that we are the leaders of innovation, making sure that we're coming up with solutions that help to better um, impact our profession. Like we can't sit back and allow people behind desks to make decisions because they're not making decisions with our best interests at heart. And in some ways they're not making decisions with the, the interests of the patient at heart. I mean, how can they 
when they don't physically touch the patient, when they don't see the patient, when they're not interacting with the patient. Guys, we are the trend for this. We're the ones that need to be at the forefront of these decisions, and we need to be very vocal about this. We have to stand up and we have to stick together. And I'm challenging us as black nurses to do so, to do so. I also want to say this. This is my last little bit. This is a prime time. If you've ever thought about starting a business or a side hustle, this is the prime time to do so. They, they are not concerned about you guys, I'm telling you. They're only concerned about you clocking in and clocking out and doing what they're saying to do while you're there. Once you get off the clock, you're no longer a benefit, you're no longer a concern. And I'm not saying that to be ugly, disrespectful or rude, to me, it's just a reality check. If you've ever thought about starting your business or ever thought about having some form of a side hustle, today is the day to do it. There are too many resources in this group. There's too much going on in this group for us not to all have something going on secondary for ourselves. And so I'm challenging each and every one of you guys even if you do have a business, you might want to look into starting something secondary too. I believe in multiple streams of income. Don't just put all your eggs in one basket, as they say, right? So being a nurse is one of the most beautiful things that we can do. Saving somebody's life is very beautiful. And I totally get that. But I also want you to do things that involve your purpose, involve your happiness, and involve your satisfaction. I don't want you to be out there and struggling and stressed out and mentally in mental anguish because of, well, I'm a nurse and this is what I was called to do and this is what I'm supposed to do. Yes, I totally understand practicing in your calling, but I also believe that you have other things that you are called to do and that you're great at. And so I wanna encourage each and every one of you, nursing is good and great, don't get me wrong, there are benefits to being a nurse, there are, okay? Even in this challenging time, I don't wanna be any other profession right now besides being a nurse. However, I understand that there are multiple things that we have inside of outside of nursing. So we also need you to practice in that purpose because you have other skill sets. You have other things that you can offer this country, this great nation. You have things that you can offer us as a culture even. So I want you, if you've ever thought about starting your business, Go ahead and start it today because today, now is the time, right? Now is the prime opportunity for us to get started and get going. Um, I want to see, I haven't been looking at any of you guys' um, messages. So I want to see what all you guys have written. So let me hop over on my phone so I can see because on my, my fancy little stuff here, I can't tell who is sending me what. So I wanna look and see what your messages are so I can respond to them appropriately. But um, does anybody have a question? Does anybody have anything to say? What do you, y'all tell me what y'all think. Leave your, your opinions in the comments. I wanna, I just wanna know. Y'all hadn't even told me how cute I'm looking in my, I got a little makeup on, I got my lights on, all that. <laughs> but seven stream, yeah, exactly. I see somebody talking about streams of income. Yeah. Oh, somebody asked me about my thoughts on the fabric face mask. You know, I, yeah, I don't know. And I'm concern, obviously, because fabric is not an N95. I mean, we've been taught throughout the years that N95 was what we did for airborne isolation. Um, it, in that case, if fabric was the best option, then we could have been using fabric all these years. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure um, how I really feel about it. Uh, it's kind of scares me. It makes me a little nervous because I just wonder if, if it is effective, but then too, on the other hand, I feel like at this point, <laughs> we need something, you know, and if, if nothing else, it's made a, a cool income stream for a lot of people. So I was even thinking about, I sew, I haven't sewn in a while, but I do sew. I was thinking about getting my sewing machine out and going ahead and sewing up some 
face masks because there's a lot of face masks floating around and it's a good stream of income. But most importantly, um, is it safe? Is it effective? You know, I don't know how to even answer that. I'm not sure. But it kind of scares me to think that it may not be. But on the other hand, I feel like it may be the best that we have at this point in time. You know, it's better than absolutely nothing. So, you know, that's just how I feel about it. I'm not sure if it's the best thing or not. Uh, let's see what else you guys have to say. <laughs> let's see what happens if or when they get those respirators and no one to manage them. Exactly. You know, so that's another thing. Uh, make sure you guys thank our respiratory therapists because they work really close side of us. And yeah, you think about this. In nursing, we might have a patient that had a total hip replacement or a carotid or a heart attack or something, and they may not be on the respirator or a ventilator, I should say, or they may be stable or whatever. But respiratory therapists, like that is their job. They don't get away from respiratory and secretions and being exposed. So you guys make sure that you're thanking them for their hard work, because oftentimes when we talk about healthcare, we talk about nurses and doctors, but we forget about RT, we forget about PT, OT, some of our ancillary staff, our CNAs, we forget about housekeeping. These people are there working as well. So we have to remember that it takes literally a whole team of people to make sure that a patient is, is effectively cared for. So yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> this, this is a mess. This is it's crazy and it'll be interesting to see what decisions come of it, uh, what type of new laws will be in place, what types of uh, requirements, like are we gonna all have to be trained on ventilators after this? Who knows, but um, it'll be interesting to see what comes down the pipeline after all of this is said and done. Um, I'm just looking at your, your comments. Yeah, Tamika, go ahead and make some, some face masks and help us out. Um, I don't know. I just don't know what to say and what to think completely. Uh, I just would like to, to continue to challenge you guys to make smart decisions, to make decisions that um, at first, at minimum, you always have to remember yourself and your family because if you don't have those two things, then you don't you don't have much of anything else. And then on top of that, you can't be much of help to anybody else. So if you're not healthy and you're not well taken care of, and I understand that there's a sacrifice that we have to make when we go into the hospital, trust me, <laughs> I after 14 and a half years, I totally understand that there's a lot of sacrifices. And sometimes it these sacrifices are not appreciated. Um, it is can be a thankless job sometimes, but there are people that do appreciate us. And so I don't want you guys to give up, but I do want you to make sure that you're taking care of yourself first because that's priority. Again, if you're not healthy and you're not well, then you cannot take a, care of anybody else effectively. And that's that's just that. That's just my opinion on that. And I, you know, at this point. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to say about it, but I feel like you have to have you first mentality. I'm not saying for all y'all to walk off the job tomorrow. That's not what I said. I'm saying to make sure that you take care of yourself first. And so to be honest with you, with transparency, you know, that was a part of the reason why I did leave my job. And I left. It's funny that it's during this time frame, but I did not leave because of coronavirus. I was leaving because I was taking care of me first. My emotional health and my mental health were at jeopardy. And also my physical health was becoming in question because I was not being able to physically convert over to the night shift. So I was having trouble with um, going to sleep and staying asleep appropriately. So I would work easily 13, 14 hours, come home, even after taking medicine. I, I've never had to take medicine to sleep, but I, I come home, take medicine, go to sleep, and I would be up within two to three hours and then have to be back at work again. 
And so it was at a point in time where I realized that, first of all, my priority is myself and my health and my organization. You guys are a priority to me. My personal brand is a priority to me. So I had to make the tough decision to walk away. And I had tenure built up. I had PTO. I had benefits. I had all of that built up. But it was a priority for me to go ahead and walk away and to follow my dream. And even in the midst of all that's going on, I will say that I've been more at peace now than I've had, than I have been in a very long time. So sometimes you have to make a very tough decision. And I know that right now, a lot of you guys are having to make very tough decisions. You know, do I go to work? Do I not? Do I stay with my family? You know, who's going to take care of the bills? Who's going to provide for us? You know, I have to go out on the front lines. I don't want to be exposed. I don't want my family to be exposed. You're having to make some very tough decisions. And so I'm praying that you will be, first of all, safe. And I'm also praying that God covers you. Um, somebody just said you choose you. And, and that's right. You have to choose you first because you cannot be of any help or any benefit to anybody else. And I'm praying that God gives you peace in whatever your decision is made, whatever decision that you make. I hope he gives you peace in, in making the decision and being OK with the decision thereafter. So whatever you choose, you know, understand that this community supports you through that transition, whatever that may be. And understand this is a safe place. You know, I created an environment here in Black Nurse Entrepreneurs so that we will be able to come and discuss things that pertain to our community that, um, you know, we may not have the freedom to go and discuss in other communities for whatever reason. But I wanted to be able to create a safe, safe place for us with like minded individuals on some of the same similar missions in order to be productive in our culture and in our society. So, you know, at this point in time, please be careful out there. Um, I don't know when if and when I'll be back on the front lines with you. Um, I'm having to make some tough decisions again because I didn't, ex I didn't expect all of this to be happening, right? I, like I said, I quit work and I had a whole nother plan, but I always say that God's plan and man's plan are two different things. So sometimes you just have to operate in your pure faith and understand that what God has for you is for you. And that you will, this, this will be over with. We will get through it. We will survive. We will make it through. This is a challenging time for all of us, but we will make it through. I'm a firm believer and we will come out even better than what we were uh, even a couple of weeks ago. So that's what I have to say about it. Um, I'm just looking at some of the other stuff that you guys have. But um, anybody else, anybody else have anything to say? I'm just looking at your comments again. Um, someone said the fabric face mask all depends on how it is planned to be used. But if I had to choose, I would prefer those that offer the filter pocket. Yeah, with the filters. I do think people overlook that if used need to be done in combination with a face shield that extends to the chin and below the sides of the face. I agree. CDC does make it clear it is not PPE, it's protection is unknown so it's at each individual risk and facility risk if they choose to take the path yeah i the fabric mask thing i'm not sure you know obviously if the cdc is not giving us which i uh, sometimes i don't know about cdc but that's neither here or there uh, i my personal opinion is i'm not 100 percent sure about it but i guess it beats anything and if it's there to help to extend the life of our normal face mask maybe i'm i don't know i i just hope and pray that we'll be okay that that's that's my prayer really because we are out on the front lines and we are having to to deal with this and like i said you know it highlights the fact that i don't feel like our nation was prepared obviously i feel like we didn't learn anything from ebola and, and that you know I may have to get on a whole nother live for that one, but how is it that we had five years ago, four and a half, five years ago, we had one of the deadliest viruses to hit our shores. And 
I don't think we we learned a thing from the Ebola crisis. I don't think we were prepared at all for this. And and I'm not going to get into the whole commander in chief issue that we have going on. But, you know, it's important that we have leadership that has us protected, like has our best interests at heart and are making decisions that's on the benefit of our American lives. You know, I don't necessarily feel like that has happened. But, you know, again, those are more lives for more days. Uh, I'm not going to go live about that <laughs> situation today. But, um, yeah, I don't I don't really feel like we've learned anything up from Ebola time frame. And if we don't make some changes today, we're not going to learn anything from this situation either. And I, my fear is that in you know, five, 10 years, we will repeat this again. This is actually an excellent opportunity for some nurses to get into uh, public health or education, things like that, that, you know, are, are some of maybe the most, some of the more unpopular areas, you know, everybody wants to go into nurse practitioner, et cetera, but we need nurses in those other areas too. Um, public health is, is a hot topic right now. Um, I need my public health nurses to to stand tall, you know, speak out on these issues. We need you. Um, this, this is a huge public health issue and uh, we need your expertise. So this is a great opportunity for you to launch something in that realm. If you've never done it, if you want to create a business opportunity right now is a good time for you to be able to do that as well. Um, that's pretty much all I have. It was better reaction to the Ebola crisis. I feel they got ready very quick compared to what was happening now. Exactly. I totally agree. Um, so as far as the, <laughs> hey, who called me Dr. Alfiata? <laughs> Y'all are funny. Um, as far as uh, websites, someone just asked about what websites can you go to buy masks? Um, oh, hi, Dana. I see that you said that. Um, I don't have anything specific. There's been a lot of people within b and &E, either people who have made masks in B&E or people who know people or ways to get it. I don't know of anybody specific. I'm not a, a good resource per se on that because I'm not endorsing anybody particular, but there are masks flying off the shelves and there's masks everywhere. Um, so my suggestion is to go down through the group because there are a lot of people in the group that are either doing it or they have um, advertised for somebody else that's doing it. I've been kind of relaxed on advertising. You know, my my thing has always been to create B&E as an, um, a platform or an environment for us to be able to have a place for us to advertise our businesses and our creations and stuff. I've been a little relaxed on that right now because I understand that there's a huge need for products. And even if somebody up the street is selling a product or whatever, that would be beneficial to the healthcare community. Um, I have been allowing some of those posts to come through because I feel like they benefit us as healthcare providers on the front lines. So I will encourage you guys, you know, we will get back to more of our stricter rules. Um, there's a certain environment and atmosphere that I do like to maintain within the community. But with that being said, um, just go down through the timeline. You can also use the search function. It's uh, just type in face mask or something like that. Just do that. And then you'll be able to see. Uh, tons of face masks there, you know, you guys are creative. I, I'll give it to you. You guys have really created some really nice face masks. And I personally would like to sew some, but I don't know. I am super busy behind the scenes right now. And I might, you never know. Anyways, I'm done. That's, that's my soapbox. Um, just make sure that you guys uh, pay attention. Cause I'm going to be rolling out some few things, you know, I feel like April is a hot month. That, that's my month, y'all. That, that's my birthday month. And every year I feel so good about April because it's the spring. It's when things start growing. It's a rebirth. So it, it, if nothing else, 
this is a rebirth for you guys. This is when your your livelihood, your thoughts, your your visions should come come pop up, come out, should start growing, things like that. That's how I feel about April because all the plants and the birds and everything come back out. So I that is my hope and my prayer for your vision is that you're able to grow it during this season. Uh, like I said, that's it. That's all I have for today. I will be back with you guys soon. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your comments. I appreciate your support. As always, I believe that the things that you guys have done and contributed to this community are absolutely amazing. You guys blow me away every day because of your ingenuity and your innovation and how you have created streams of income for yourself and for our community. So uh, God bless you. Please be safe out there. Please do not um, get distracted. Um, this is really a trick of the enemy is what it is. And so we have goals. We are the trend. And so we will continue to fight for what we believe in as being right and as being fair and as being just, but also as being innovative and creative for our community as well as the healthcare community too. So if nothing else, I love you guys. Um, again, thank you for reaching out to me. I'm doing well. Hadn't missed any meals yet, but if anybody wants to send me anything, you guys feel free to do so. Take care. You guys have a good rest of your day.